This episode is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, the number one seller of games and gaming accessories. And GatheringMagic.com, the number one resource for Magic the Gathering, news and articles. Hi, I'm Devin. I'm a member of the Commander Rules Committee, and this is my Savitri Scarzam Popper deck. My general is Civitri Scarzan. She is a 7 mana 6 4 vanilla creature with no abilities. And believe it or not, she is the deck's primary win condition. Your goal is to hit each of your opponents four times with Civitri Scarzan. Um, first off, basic lands. The deck runs a pretty high land count just because you're going to try and hit seven mana as soon as possible. Um, it runs a variety of its limited selection of uh, non-basic lands at common. You've got all the cycling lands, a number of uh, fetch lands, Terramorphix Expanses, Command Tower, Demir Aqueduct. Note that we're pretty tight for mana fixing here. There are very few dual lands at common, even ones that come into play tapped. So this is the kind of deck where we're looking forward to Demir Guildgate getting printed. Um, Halimar Depths is a pretty common expedition mar uh, map target in this deck. We've got Haunted Fengraph as a good way to recur some creatures. We've got a variety of mana accelerants and searches. Um, Bobble, Maps, Fear, you should be running those in all your decks. Some basic mana rocks, Mind Stone, Ingot, Demir Signet, Fractured Power Stone, which is a new addition to the deck from last summer, not often seen in Popper yet. Um, after the mana base, we've got some very basic just uh, card selection. Your cards are not as good as your opponent's, so you need to make sure you see the right ones. So we've got a pretty standard setup. Preordain, Ponder, Gataxian Probe, Brainstorm. Then the actual card draw. Again, we're always going to be scraping here. We've got Think Twice, for C, Deep Analysis, all pretty solid. Ristic Study, Compulsive Research, Rush of Knowledge, surprisingly underplayed card. I've drawn seven cards with it for five mana, usually draws at least three or four. Uh, Mystic Remora, another powerhouse that can come down on turn one, draw you four or five cards in the first couple turns. Then we get into basic one-for-one -one removal. A lot of the idea of this deck is just draw a bunch of cards, one-for-one -one your opponent's better cards with removal and counter spells, and hope that you can eventually get there. So we've got a strong selection of uh, key black removal spells. Note that they're at a variety of mana costs, meaning that our transmute package can always find a uh, removal spell or counter spell at mana cost two through four, even if it looks like we're running some uh, subpar cards. For example, put away, uncommonly played four cost counter spell, but a solid hard counter you can transmute for when you need to. Also useful, can land early, counter spell late. Um, then we get into uh, Dreamscape Artist is another excellent card that doesn't get played as often as it should, especially if you're utilizing the graveyard as a resource. It's great for ramping uh, blue decks ahead in the early game. Um, we've got a number of cards that cycle, either land cycling or normal cycling, creatures specifically, so that we can get them back with uh, all of Black's return creature cards from your graveyard to your hand, allowing us to turn those into card advantage. Uh, similarly, transmute creatures can be bought back with all of our black creature recursion, allowing them to be used as reusable tutor effects. We've also got a couple of other transmute cards. These allow us to set up some of our engines, which we can use to gain card advantage in the mid-game, try and lock our opponents out, or just get us the um, protection we need to get Scarzam through for that final push to the win. We've got some other card selection, Forbidden Alchemy, Merchant Scroll, which I'll tell you what that usually goes for later, Mystical Teachings, very powerful, Trinket Mages, uh, one of the keystones of the deck. You may have seen a number of one-cost artifacts go by. We can get a lot of different effects off of this. We've got uh, Nihil Spellbomb for Graveyard Hate, Executioner's Capsule for Removal, Expedition Map to find lands or wafers, Bobble to Rampus. It's a surprisingly flexible card, even when you're limited to finding commons. 
Nymnonic Wall is another good ETB creature that can buy us some value and uh, be recurred if we're willing to put in some extra mana. Moldrifter is an excellent card at common, especially when paired with uh, Grim Harvest, which you'll come up, which we'll see in a little bit. Uh, Grim Harvest allows us to repeatedly buy back creatures. Recover always allows you to get back uh, cards from your graveyard when creature di creatures die, but Grim Harvest is especially useful because it can then buy back the creature that died. Uh, Grim Harvest and Moldrifter amounts to 8 mana, draw 2 cards at sorcery speed with buyback. Maybe not the most efficient card draw engine, but you're not going to do much better at common. Uh, similarly, we've got Death Denied, which can get back a whole pallu of, passel of value creatures, cyclers, land cyclers, and anything else that's found its way into our graveyard. You're rarely wanting to cast Scarzam for 9 mana. A lot of the time you can just let her go to the graveyard and get her back with one of your recursion spells. Grim Discovery gets us back a land if we need to hit a land drop. We've got uh, fetch lands like Terramorphic. We've got all the available cycling lands. Soul Manipulation, counter spell that can also get back creatures. The aforementioned Nihil Spellbomb. Spreading Seas, basically cantripping blue land destruction. This should be played more often than it is. If you pay to turn your opponent's Cabal Coffers or Gaia's Cradle into an island and draw a card, you're doing pretty well. Echoing Truth, one of our few options for beating token decks, and uh, very useful as you can uh, Mystical Tutor or Merchant Scroll for it in the event of an emergency. Also several Transmute cards that can go get it when, if you're going to die. Into the Royal, strong bounce spell, got some card advantage, works with the Ophidians, we'll come to later. Capsize, possibly the most important card in the deck. This is what you are Merchant Scrolling and Mystical te Teachings for as often as possible. It will, once you get to around 10 to 12 mana, and this deck will need to stretch the game out that long to win, you can start setting yourself infinitely ahead and occasionally buy it back from your graveyard if need be. Capsize is also very strong with Reality Asset. Um, this is a weird little uh, non-conditional permanent destruction in blue, and I've certainly locked people out of a game completely by paying 9 mana a turn to Reality Asset a land, Capsize it, Rinse, Lather, Repeat. Crypt Rats is another keystone of the deck. Um, it's one of the few sweepers available at common, along with Pestilence. But what's convenient is this one also allows us to rebuy it repeatedly with our uh, creature recursion. Also, the way it's worded, you can pay a bunch of black mana into it, put the ability on the stack, capsize it in response, allowing you to uh, get a repeatable board sweeper going if you have the life to spare. Ulamog's Crusher is the only alternate win condition in the deck. It is a way to win without Scarzam, but as far as common beaters go, you are not going to find much better. Vanishing is an effective way to uh, protect Scarzam from absolutely anything, and in a pinch can be used to uh, phase out attackers um, to uh, protect yourself as a uh, pacifism with two mana upkeep. Norox Stealth Suit is another good protective card that allows you to protect Scarzam or flash around to protect other creatures at instant speed. Between Capsize, your instant speed removal, and a lot of counter spells, you're often passing turns with a lot of mana up late game. Whisper Silk Cloak is probably the best win condition in the deck as far as getting uh, Ophidians in early and Savitri Scarzam in late. My favorite, however, is Protective Bubble, which is like Whisper Silk Cloak, but much, much worse and much funnier to beat people with. Finally, we have a selection of Ophidians, the original, Scroll Thief, and Stealer of Secrets, which are one of the few ways to gain repeatable card advantage in the early game. Often it'll be worth spending some early bounce spells and or removal to uh, make sure your Ophidians are hitting consistently. It's like Phyrexian Arena, only it hits your opponents instead of you. That's the V3 Scarzam. Hopefully you enjoyed. Thanks for watching CMDR Decks. Please subscribe and favorite.